Now then, well, as you may have guessed already, I am in the Lake District. Stunning valley, and what I'm going to do today is something slightly different. So rather than doing a wild camp up on the fells, I'm going to do my wild camp-ish in my roof tent. I've had this roof tent about 14, maybe 15 years now, and it's just brilliant. It's served me really well. I've travelled around uh, Europe in it about three or four times and camped in some absolutely spectacular places. Maybe I'll show a few of those uh, photos of that um, in this video. Anyway, I'm also going to um, show you today a couple of um, items that I've been sent, and that is perfect showcased in this uh, sort of scenario where you're out traveling and uh, you need to have power. So one is a massive power, um, like a, a portable leisure battery, and the other one is a solar charger, which will charge pretty much anything, including that big battery as well. So I'll uh, show you what those are, as well as um, answer a few of your questions that you guys asked me the other day. So. So the tent is up and the bed is made. So I would thought I would just show you these two items that have been sent by Jackery. Um, this company's uh, hit it pretty big through the US and uh, what they're trying to do now is just break into the UK. This is why they've offered a few people um, this just to review. I've got to say, I actually looked at this a couple of years back, um, the battery, and I thought it was an awesome bit of kit then. Um, so when they offered it to me for free, I was snapped it up. It suits my life perfectly, I've got to say. Um, I've done quite a bit of traveling like through Europe and everything. And by doing that, um, the thing that I'm always missing is just that extra bit of power. I always carry like loads of different sort of smaller batteries, but just to have like um, this one as like a base uh, to always have that extra power to power everything else up, it just works wonders. You can charge it um, just by the mains, it takes about seven hours to charge from flat uh, by the mains battery and also you can charge it through your car 12 volt system uh, which takes i think about another hour it might be about eight or nine hours for that you can also charge it using this uh, jackery solar saga 100 solar panel so 100 watt output this which is pretty good and uh, it falls out and just sits in your front windscreen or outside on the floor on the roof whatever you want just to uh, gain as much sun as possible uh, I think it takes between 10 and 15 hours with that, depending on how much solar gain there is of the day. Uh, but again, another way of just topping it up constantly, just putting that on for an hour or so every day. Currently, I have got three different things on USBs here on charge. So I have got um, my Phoenix uh, light there. I've got my DJI batteries for my drone. And then here's some uh, GoPro batteries, which I've actually finished charging now. I've also got here as well, this is my uh, Makita charger, which I use for all my different drills and bits and bats that I need for work. So if I just flick that on now, so even though it's charging three things through the USB, it can also, there we go, it can also charge another battery, something like that, which is brilliant because then you've always got a power source to make sure that everything else is always topped up. I've got to say, I love this. It's absolutely perfect for me. Um, and when they offered me, me it, I thought, perfect. It's, it's not often that I actually accept things from people, purely because I've either got things that are better quality than that, or realistically, what I don't want to do is sell myself out to products that are not that good. And I'm not going to um, be dishonest and say, oh, buy this, it's really nice. It's just no chance will I do that, because I'm not going to lose uh, trust with you guys that are out there. So anyway, overall, 
brilliant i've got to say um i am going to use this a hell of a lot it suits my lifestyle perfectly and um the fact that you can charge everything else up on it as well as it's got a 12 volt output which is good because then you can uh use something like let's have a think a 12 volt shower that'd be a good one so if you're traveling i've got a 12 volt shower which is a stick in a bucket and um but you need to run it off the car but the fact that this is portable you could run it from this hang your shower in a tree and just go off and have a shower somewhere that's just a bit out of the way so there's a good little tip for you um if you wanted to use this for traveling and then at least you've got a proper shower i'm not sure it would have enough output to run a hair dryer not that i need it but say your missus might want it with a long hair um because obviously anything that produces heat does have a massive um heat uh sorry a massive need for energy so i don't think that it would probably do that but to be honest i've not tried it so maybe it will anyway overall definitely worth checking out i've put a link in the description for you so you can actually sort of see uh, what these are um i think currently they're sold on amazon which is really good because a lot of people are already so uh, subscribed to the uh, amazon prime or whatever it is i am um so there you go the Jackery battery pack, which is the Explorer 500 and the Solar Saga 100 uh, solar panel. There we go. I'll show you the panel tomorrow in a bit more detail because obviously currently it's dark and it's not going to get any energy, but I'll show you it in use tomorrow. Anyway, let's get on and cook some dinner. I'm starving and I've got something really nice to cook. Camping cooking at its finest right this is my camp kitchen i've gone old school in my old mountain equipment jacket which i've had about when did i get it in 1998 maybe when i was doing my canoe uh, and kayak instructors award and i just use this as just one of those throw on things that just will keep you warm regardless of the weather it is honestly a monster Anyway, let's get on and do some cooking. Let me just show you quickly the kitchen itself. So we have a uh, double burner there. So I've got a pot and a frying pan. And then I've got this piece of corian, which I just lay on here, which I use as my chopping board. And that's just it, nice and simple. There's a cool bag there with the stuff that's been uh, kept cool for the last day or two. So we've got some cheap steaks. So I'm gonna share these with Blue chorizo i've got some broccoli because i always have broccoli and then we've got mushrooms an onion and maybe some green beans as well i'll chuck in oh yeah and look a couple of beers just sneaking in there so that is it time to cook so first of all let's open this chorizo and then we're going to uh, get this uh, fried up in the frying pan which would then release some oils, which would be great for cooking the steak in then. So let's go with, we'll go with that amount. So I'll just chop this up a little bit smaller. It's great to cook with because it gives so much flavor straight away, does chorizo. And um, also with it, you get the uh, oil. So we'll pop that in the pan and then we'll get this lit. Oh, we need to turn the gas on. There we go, straight away, just get a few oils off that. So now we've got some oil there. I'm just going to chuck in some rough cut mushrooms. Steak and mushroom, can't beat it, can you? Then let these uh, soak some of that oil up. Get a couple more in, eh? So while those are just doing their thing, I'm going to just pour a bit of water in here. And I can boil off a couple of these vegetables. There we go. So let's get in some broccoli. 
my favourite. Keeps it fairly small so it cooks a bit quicker, but I don't mind eating raw broccoli anyway, it's really, really tasty to be honest. Some broccoli. And I'll put in a few of these green beans as well. Set that off for heat a minute. And just get those veg going. Good old zebra can, can't beat them. <laughs> they work brilliantly. I forgot the onion, so I'm just going to put a big chunk of this in. Get this pan back on the heat. Chuck the onion in there. Break it up a bit. So next job, we're gonna have to get the steak in. So I've got the steak ready, and all I've done is made an opening in the middle there just to pop that steak in. So we'll pick her up. We're not gonna do anything to it. We're just gonna use the oils that are in there to cook it. And pop her in there. So cheap steaks. I'm gonna save this one for blue. He's gonna have it raw though. And cheap beers too. But it's one of them nights. Just nice to chill out, have some nice food, and drink a decent beer. Yep, not decent. Actually, to be fair, that's quite tasty. Oh, awesome. Cheers, guys. So while that's sizzling away, I'm just going to uh, chop this up a little bit smaller just so Blue can eat it, because if I don't chop it up, I'll just swallow that in one. You don't think out of it. Can't chop it up anyway, it's too fatty. So I'll just slice through this. Here, Blue, come here. Gotta look after my dog, don't I? Little bluey dog. Blue, come here. What's this? He's a good boy. Hey, look at this. Right, sit. Good boy, that, nah, leave it. Go on then. Cheap steak blue, awesome, eh? Well, I'm glad you savoured the taste with that one. <laughs> well, yep, good steak that one, it. Well worth buying for you. Oh dear. Nope, it's taking the packet off now. Blue, leave no trace, don't forget. Not bad that, is it? Steak, chorizo, mushroom and onion with a couple of green vegetables to go with it. So all I'm going to add to that is a tiny bit of mayonnaise. Dinner time. So this is it. This is as good as it actually gets. This is seriously living the dream. Steak and veg in the middle of nowhere, cooked by your own hand, shared with the dog, and just ultimately tasty. Wow, onion. Wow, chorizo. That is so good. Living the dream. Living the actual dream. It might only be just for one night every so often, but do as many nights as you can. It's really worth it. There's no point um, spending all your life working and doing all the things that you're not actually that interested in. Get yourselves out there and live the dream just for the odd night. It's totally worth it. Steak. 
So a couple of days back on my Instagram, I asked you guys to just ask me some questions that I could answer on my next camp. So this is it. So quite a few of you responded, which was awesome. Um, obviously, I want to try have a bit of an interactive channel, I guess, which uh, means I'm going to do some lives and stuff at some point so you guys can ask some questions and hopefully you can just grill me about anything in life. Camping stuff, yeah, fine, but... Um, you know let's move away from that sometimes as well and just get into just cool stuff in life because uh, it's all about just passing on positivity and i feel i've got quite a lot of that energy to give away so anyway let's get to some questions so i'll just uh, open up my phone and we'll have a look and see what you guys asked i did actually ask for something interesting or funny um let's see how funny and interesting you guys are <laughs> so i'm gonna start with this is rich mills 1987 i've had a little bit of conversation with this guy actually he seems like a nice fella um anyway he asks do you ever wonder if blue thinks not again dad can we have a night in <laughs> um yeah maybe i mean to be honest he's an outdoors dog he absolutely loves being outside probably more than i do so i'm gonna say no i think uh, no matter what if i want to go out he'll definitely want to go out so you know we're just a team he probably draws me out more because obviously when you've got a dog it's uh, great because you can take him out walking and you have to take him out walking so why just you know waste time doing the boring stuff get outside and do a proper adventure so both of us love it so why not Anyway, next question. Have you while camped or climbed any mountains outside of the UK? Uh, yes, I've done quite a bit of uh, camping outside of the UK. Not so much while camping though. Like I said in this video already, um, I've been around Europe a couple of times or so um, and to the south of France and everything in this roof tent. So I've actually camped all over the place. Um, and seen some amazing places. And the good thing is about having a roof tent or a camper van or anything, you can um, just turn up at different places and just enjoy it wherever it is. So yeah, I've been to pretty much all the countries in uh, Europe, I would say. My favorite is probably Switzerland. Um, Austria's awesome. Where else was good? Um, I've done all like the Romantistrasse and uh, what else, the Black Forest in Germany, things like that. Um, but I've got to say, the Dolomites, the Italian um, Alps are incredible. You've got to go see those, they're absolutely awesome. So let's move on. We have Andy Wardle. What a surprise. He's a legend, is that guy. Anyway, he asks, what is the airspeed velocity of an unladen swallow? funny guy well actually Andy I've got to say that I did a degree in zoology and um, I did my dissertation on the airspeed of unladen swallows so I actually know the answer um, I also uh, included um, swans in that as well um, and also the Canada geese there the, it was a three different types of bird that I went with um, but the actual um, unladen velocity of a swallow um, the speed is 36 kilometers per hour get that mr. Wardle, eh? <laughs> oh dear what's this one then what's been your favorite camp location to date oh favorite camp location I've got to say one of my favorite camps that I've ever done was um, it was brilliant. It was actual pure brilliance. And the reason was, I looked on uh, like, I don't know, Ryanair, Jet2 and things like that and just found like the cheapest flights possible. So with Ryanair, I found um, a flight for 9.99 to uh, Faro, South Portugal. Um, and it was 9.99 back. So I packed my bag. Oh, I did have to pay a little bit extra for having my bag because I needed obviously a bit more than just like a, a luggage thing. So I had like a bit of a backpack. 30 litres though, that's all. Anyway, I flew to Faro, I got out of the airport and I just set off walking. So I walked along the beach for 60 odd kilometres. I camped three nights um, just on the beach. Uh, where else did I camp? 
and I took like a sleeping mat and a hammock, but there's nowhere I could hammock camp. It did my head in really. Um, so oh, the last night I hammock camped, I actually, uh, oh, it's a bit dodgy this. So there was like, it, this was winter time, but it was hot still. It was like 18 to 20 degrees while I was there, sunny all the time. Um, but I camped on the final night. Um, I couldn't find any trees to put my hammock up. So I found two pillars which were in a complex, you know, like a holiday complex. So I pitched my hammock between these sort of two stone built pillars pillars, um, and camped in this holiday complex and there was nobody there. And the best thing about it was they had a completely clean toilet and working facilities, which I helped myself to. Sorry, guys. It was an awesome uh, camp though, honestly, three nights of it. And the best thing about it was the flights cost me nothing. And while I was over there, the total amount spent was 14 euros. So I took some food with me and ate that. And um, the I went out one morning, I thought I'm gonna treat myself to a really nice cooked breakfast. And I got there, ate this breakfast, got, in chap got chap into this older couple and they insisted on paying. They were just like amazed like what I was doing and everything. So they insisted on paying. So 14 euros and most of that was on the last night where I had two beers and um, a pizza at this really nice restaurant. So there you go, next one. Is Blue a trained sheepdog? Uh, yes, my dad has done more of the training on sheep with him. Um, he's obviously a well-trained dog and me and my dad work together because we use the same sort of um, commands for everything. So he obeys us both very well. We're like the two sort of alphas to him really. Um, and yeah, the sheep side of it, my dad's uh, trained him on the sheep so I know the commands so sometimes I'll use the dog on the sheep and occasionally um, about probably twice where a farmer's sort of been struggling in some way or some sheep have been out and I've been able to um, help the farmer get the sheep back in the field or whatever just by using blue so yeah he has uh, he has his moments that dog he's awesome really isn't he um, next question <laughs> Nicola Forward <laughs> um, I'm just gonna say yes to that, Nicola. Okay, I'm saying yes. I can't. Re I can't say that out loud. No way. Next question then. Um, so, how do you how do you train dogs to stay away from sheep? Oh, similar question, really. Um, time and make sure you've got a command that's just. Um, if your dog's doing something you don't want it to do, make sure you've got a strong command that is quick, sharp, and that they understand. And for uh, blue it's just the word no so whatever he's doing if you just say no he will stop doing whatever he's doing at that time so you've just got to be um, um, what's the word you've got to make sure that when you're actually using a word that he actually obeys to it and once he gets it um, that's it your dog will be absolutely spot on um, because you've got control then as soon as you say no they will stop what they're doing and they're gonna stop stealing your food from your plate or i don't know getting up at the table getting on the sofa going up the stairs whatever you want but one command and just make sure that you stick by it every time yeah i'm struggling with this uh technical crap um that gopro i can't afford it to break but it's really not um happy at the minute and i don't know why which is making me a little bit sad too anyway we will carry on so a summit together asks what is your absolute favorite piece of gear and why well every piece of gear that you use has a particular purpose some have more purposes than others and each are quite good for um surviving in different situations but if you had the choice of one item to take to a desert island to survive what would that be and i'm going to say a knife so my favorite piece of kit is a knife purely because you can survive just with a knife um maybe an axe i do like my axes as well i've probably got 40 odd knives and i've got about 15 axes so slightly obsessed maybe anyway moving on uh, we have Dan Hughes hikes 
<laughs> would you prefer a hand made of jelly or a foot made of ice cream? Well, that's easy. It would be a hand made of jelly. Um, cause then you can still go do all your adventures and everything. And whilst you are needing energy for those adventures, you can be licking your hand, the jelly on the hand to give you the, uh, the energy for it. So there you go. Definitely that. Um, next one, Roy D. What's in Blue's little dog park? Well, I've shown it on a few videos, but really he just carries his own food and bedding. So I've made him like a mat, which he uses, um, a sleeping mat. And um, obviously a, he needs to eat as well. So I've got the food and I put that onto this silicon mat, which I make into like a bowl. And I can obviously use it for water as well if I make it into like a cone shape. So I've kept it light, kept it simple, and um, he is quite happy just eating off the floor, to be honest, he's blue, but um, that's what's in his pack. Oh, and also I put in a safety rope. So I could use it if needed. It's only a thin thing, but it would take my weight if needed. Um, but also a couple of carabiners, so I can clip him on uh, with his backpack and lower him down uh, off a cliff somewhere safe, or actually pull him up onto something just to help him out as well. So, yep. Yeah. That's my little bluey dog. Um, next question. Uh, have you ever thought time to turn back? No. I don't think I have. See, I live by sort of like a winner never quits and a quitter never wins. And I always want to be a winner. So... If I set myself a challenge, then pretty much I want to sort of complete that challenge. Obviously, I'm not daft, you know, if it's dangerous and I won't be doing something that's going to uh, injure or hurt me or someone else around me. But um, generally, I've completed everything I've set my mind to. Um, there was a time when I, um, yeah, I was climbing at Bremen Rocks and I was only messing about bouldering, just keeping some low level stuff. I didn't have a mat with me or anything like that. And uh, I set off climbing up this little section and I got up a little, a few, a couple of metres up or so. And I thought, oh, I'll just go to that next bit. And I got up there and I thought, oh, OK, I need, I'll have to go a bit further now. So I went on to the next one and then I sort of got that, um, you know, sometimes in life you get that real fear that just runs through your body. And a lot of people just totally freeze and then, you know, they're just stuck and can't do anything about it. And I had about five seconds thinking, I'm too high here and I, I just need to be really careful and um anyway i just instantly thought be calm and i climbed i had to climb further up to get myself out of that situation but i was actually quite high up and in a dangerous place at that point um and having two young kids at the time it made me think i'm never gonna risk my life like that because it would have been just that would have been it if i'd have fallen so luckily i got myself out of that one and learnt from it So this is Tom Buried Alive. I like what you did there. Tom Buried Alive. Brilliant. What made you want to start the channel? Um, well, it was sort of lockdown and I, I was being out camping loads anyway. And I just sort of thought, you know what? Why not film this and just sort of uh, see how it goes? So I filmed one or two and just, to, you know, put it out there test the waters as as you say and um really i thought it would be a really good way of uh storing uh videos to show the kids and the grandkids um although my kids don't watch I'm not really sure they do uh if i question them on it they're like going they're just embarrassed i think the fact that dad's a youtuber but uh anyway um yeah i i sort of started in that way but then i've sort of realized that I'm quite enjoying it. I feel that I'm doing a good job, um, you know, putting videos out there that are actually helping people and inspiring people. And because I've been a personal trainer for quite a few years of my life, it's all about motivating people to just be better um, with themselves. Um, so I've I've really enjoyed being able to um, talk to. A larger audience and actually influence a larger audience and pass on my positivity and my positive energy to people to inspire them and motivate them to get out and just do a bit more so that's 
pushing me more so to carry on and uh, make it work and obviously uh, I really do want to make it pay um, because who wouldn't want to get paid to go out on adventure and make videos on it I mean it's pretty hard to be honest um, making the videos they are um, very time consuming and I'm on pence per hour not pounds per hour so um, it's yeah it's a tricky one at the minute but I'll uh, I'll keep going so next up we have Cy Young 1978 hello Cy what's the worst thing you've ever eaten on a camp including what your dad might have served you up oh camp wise I think I've always just had pretty boring generic things to eat so I can't say there's anything been that bad for it what my dad served me up though hmm I mean as kids we were sort of brought up on uh, liver and onions so I've almost I, I actually really liked them at the time but then now I just thought I'm not too keen on that um, but my dad sort of uh, always fed us rabbit you know we've had roadkill everything going over the years um, you know deer and things like that totally fine uh, we had roadkill badger my dad sort of thought he'd just try it and see what it was like so he cooked it up this is prior to him being a, a raw food eater and I was like oh give us some of that let's have a taste so we had badger one night which was quite nice um, but nothing really I don't know that horrible I would say but anyway I've tried a few different things in my time definitely whistler 95 what's the strangest <laughs> uh, dear mate mate no i cannot answer that i just cannot answer that but um yeah well done for reminding me about that one that's one of my stories and it's just one i can't really uh repeat on here anyway um anyway what else have we got i think i've sort of answered you know quite a lot of those there um angie osmo she says did you train blue yourself he's doggy perfection he is doggy perfection isn't he just i absolutely love that dog honestly um he deserved that steak tonight but um yeah I, me and my dad have trained the dog so uh, we've kept the same commands and we work um in the same way to train the dog so he is having it etched more in his brain the more time you spend with the dog doing the training the better because um it just becomes like um uh you know like when you have uh what's he call it learning um oh my god short-term memory and long-term memory so short-term memory if there's you don't spend that much time messing about with your dog and you're trying to train it and you just do a little bit here and there it's not going to remember it so having two of us doing the same sort of thing um has added to that long-term memory so he is definitely a well-trained dog because both of us have been um training him since day one so there you go we have jp maloney if I ate myself, would I double in size or disappear? If I ate myself, would I double in size or disappear? Well, let me have a drink. You're not going to double in size, are you? Come on. You're definitely not going to do that. And everybody disappears. We are all just part of this earth for a split second of time. And uh, we all end up just being nothing again. So... Um, I'm going to say disappear. We're all going to disappear. Um, any more questions then? Let's have a look. Uh, ben Harrison. What's it like being so famous? Ben Harrison. I think that might be one of my daughter's friends again. Tell me if I'm wrong. Um, what's it like being so famous? Well, currently I'm not famous at all. I am a cameraman for a very famous dog <laughs> and that's how I feel because um, honestly everyone just sort of walks past me and is just like oh blue um, I'm not jealous I promise anyway I think really it's time for me to get to bed um, I'm gonna do a more question and answer thing I need some more interesting questions definitely so I'll keep posting here and there so uh, join my Instagram it is this and um, hopefully uh, we can have a bit more interaction. I, I, I 
appreciate that and I, I do enjoy sort of chatting to people anyway. Um, I'm quite a socialite at times, but at the same time I'm quite recluse as well because I do like these uh, solo camps and everything. So anyway, it is time for me to get myself out of this chair, sort out all this bedding and then um, get myself warm and toasty and uh, lay this log. The dog's asleep in the car already and um, yeah, we will see thee in the morning. Cheers guys. Morning flowers. Not a nice night at all. Miserable and wet. But it is nice, as you all know, that sound of the uh, rain on the fly sheet when you're all cosy inside. But I'm going to have to uh, get up quickly and sort all this out and then get myself off I think so I'll just uh, quickly show you around the roof tent and then at least you've got an idea of what this one's like pretty awesome though I've got to say and just so nice to be out somewhere like this it really is even though it's a bit of a grey morning for looking out so a quick look at the outside then it's a pretty cool tent to be honest. Obviously you've got a ladder which supports the back there and uh, that's a, just the place you can sort of stand underneath so you're out of the actual weather. You've got a window on both sides and I've only opened this one up. And then at the front, this bit that oversails here, just allows you to be able to have the view out in the morning which is usually the place you want to aim your car for. So then you just opened up in the morning, drink your cup of tea, taking in that view while sat on top of the roof tent. So yeah, pretty cool. But as you can tell, it's bloody wet. It really is. So a quick look upstairs. And it opens up on all three sides there. So the front is the one that you want to face so you can open up another view in the morning. And then obviously we've got two sides to open as well. And there's plenty of space in here. I just slept on one side here, and obviously I've just got all the gear on the other side. But it's like a double bed, but slightly longer. It's good because this bit, because it oversails the back, it just allows you to have a little bit of space to be out of the rain. So as far as cooking goes, and just having your little camp kitchen is perfect. This uh, top section here actually uh, slides out of the way if you need to get rid of it. Um, but what I do is I just keep it in place, and then I just have it so I can open the boot of my car like that and then uh, I can cook under here it's cool though isn't it, it really is the good thing about this vehicle is because um, you can drop this down this is obviously where I had all my cooking set up yesterday so it works really well as like a, a place for having a kitchen uh, that's out of the weather so there we go all packed away normally in here I have a uh, a quilt and two pillows which then just fold away with this and obviously a sheet on this mattress this is actually a 70 millimeter mattress so it's actually pretty um comfortable to sleep on and then there's these uh sections here there's four of these which just help pull it in when you put it away it's just bits of elastic and then i've got this to just unroll and then this uh, comes down and just seals it all off the good thing about sleeping in here is that um even like now in the daytime, I mean, if I just take that light away, it's pretty dark. So you've always got, um, even if it's uh, bright, you can still sort of sleep quite well because it's dark in there. Um, in here, if I'll just turn you around, this is like a pole set, set here, which just slots and slides away uh, into the actual um, uh, package thing, we'll call it, I don't know. And then from that, we have got also, I'll just come down here, you can see these lines just pull all the way down and just fit to a peg at the bottom. quick look at this solar panel so it folds in two so what it's got is some mag catches at the top which are really nice and neat and solid that decent carry handle and then there's two of these which are a little bit of velcro opens it up and that just allows you to sit it back so if I just demonstrate that one-sided 
just sits back just so it angles uh, towards the sunshine. Obviously there's two of those just to support both sides. There's also this zip pocket and in here we have that's the lead for, that goes with the battery actually so that's the 12 volt charger which charges your battery from the car and then this one is just linked to the actual solar panel and on this if we can see we have got a USB A port and a USB C port so you can charge uh, different items with that so what I'll do is I'll get this out and let's see if it works looks cool though I mean look at that decent quality definitely so I'm gonna actually aim this towards the car which is actually making it even darker <laughs> and we'll see if we can get it to work so I'll get this battery down I'll grab the lead out of it we'll pop the lead in the input section there and then straight away blue light comes on and even with this tiny bit of light that we've got today, it's actually starting to charge it. Quite amazing really. So, next test is, we all want to know really if we can charge our phones up. So, obviously if it's charging that, I'm going to use this on the USB port. We'll pop this in here. Which I can't find. There we go. Get my phone out. We click that in there we go straight away start charging my phone and that's the main thing I think we all want something like this for phones and other devices like your iPad and everything especially when you're out traveling you need to um, keep your entertainment high especially on nights like this which are just absolutely boring so anyway that in the worst conditions works so we're charging that up charging my phone up can't really beat you, eh? So there we go. That is my roof tent wild camp from a very, very soggy lake district. If you like the video, let's give it a big fat thumbs up. And uh, if you haven't subscribed already, subscribe. Uh, I'm trying to raise the bar with the uh, content and everything and make sure that, you know, I'm progressing constantly and making it a better and better channel. And if you want to contribute towards uh, that progression, then uh, please contribute yourselves by um, buying me a beer on the Buy Me A Coffee link, which is below. That would be absolutely fantastic and massively appreciated. If you uh, want to follow me on Instagram, that would be good too, because like uh, on this camp, I sort of asked a few people if uh, they wanted to ask me a question or two. And uh, it's quite nice just having that interaction with you guys and uh, answering some of your questions. So... Um, that's probably the best place to uh, that I'll be doing that on on Instagram. Um, if you like any of the products I ever use, then uh, there'll be a link below to that, hopefully as well for you guys, so you can at least uh, see what sort of kit I'm using. Um, in particular, today I uh, had the Jackery uh, power pack and the uh, solar panel as well. So there's links to those two uh, items in the, the description. So check those out. Anyway, it's been a pleasure, like usual, and. Um, I am going to see you on the next one, wherever that may be. So, we will see thee.